by Toto? Yes. <laughs> I said it out loud. So that type of love is, is really, really easy. It's easy for us to love those things, those situations, those, those objects. It's entirely effortless for us to do that. It's easy for us to do that because those things are, are worthy of our love. They're worthy because we see value in them. They have a monetary value or they make us feel a certain way. They give something to us and we really don't have to do anything in return when we talk about loving those things. For many of those things, the sole reason for their existence is to make me feel better, to make you guys feel better. There's nothing that we have to give in return. We love these things because they have some sort of an inherent value. But there's another kind of love. The kind of love that does not seek value in things, but instead seeks to create value in things. Some things are loved because they are valuable, and some things are valued or valuable because they are loved. And there's a big distinction there that we want to keep in mind as we go forward today and through this marriage. Now, mind you, everything that I'm saying here, these two aren't going to remember. So this is really for you guys. <laughs> yeah. I know, you won't remember any of this stuff, so it's good that people are, yeah, that's good. People are recording, it's, it's a good thing. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm reminded of, a, of a, a story about where, you know, a child has a, a favorite blanket. Just has to have that blanket all the time. Uh, most kids, uh, in fact, my stepdaughter, it's what, a, a whoopee? Yep. yep. A wanky, I'm sorry. It's a wanky. 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 Okay. So, you know, when a child has, and, 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 you know, for my stepdaughter, she's 16 and she still has this attachment to this blanket. Uh, and it goes with her everywhere. And it's this old, crappy, tattered, <coughs> dirty, filthy, torn up, gross blanket. We're not allowed to wash it because it won't come out of the washroom. It'll just disappear. It's that old and gross. But that kid loves that blanket. Even at 16 years old, she absolutely loves that blanket. If we were to leave that blanket behind somewhere, guess what? We're going back to get it. I don't care if we've got to go back six hours and backtrack because we left the blanket. We're going back to get it. The reality is that we could, uh, the reality is that we could replace that blanket 10 times over for the amount that we spent in the gas to go get this blanket, but it has to be that blanket. And in this marriage, it has to be Sarah. It has to be Adam. They're not replaceable. That's the kind of love that God has for us. That's amazing, unquestionable, undenying, unimaginable love. You know, there's a lot of different Greek words that are used throughout the Bible that's referred to or that we translate over to love. But the one I want to draw our attention to today is the word agape. In 1 John, John the author talks about this agape love, this amazing, incredible love. It's entirely unconditional. And it is not based in any way, shape, or form on anything that we have done in order to earn that love. That, I suggest, is the kind of love that you guys have to have in order for this marriage to go well and to thrive. You see, this agape love, it's not based on performance. It's not based on who the person is. Agape love is based on the character of the person that is giving the love has nothing to do with the person that's receiving the love. And when you have that kind of love, you can survive all sorts of different storms. Now, as we stand up here this evening, sweating, because it's really stinking hot, <laughs> my word. Uh, you know, it's easy to sit here and look at each other now and say, well, this was a, a relationship made in heaven. It, it's going to be easy. All this stuff comes naturally. It's going to be so simple. Well, I have no doubt that your relationship was a match made in heaven, but I can also tell you that thunder, lightning, hail, tornadoes, they all come from heaven too. And so there's going to be times where your marriage is going to be, oh, she's fine, totally fine. There's going to be times where your marriage is going to be more the picture of a wicked thunderstorm than it's going to be the image that we all see here today. A marriage is made of two imperfect people. I can tell you this from experience. 
I'm in one. <laughs> we are imperfect people, especially Jill. <laughs> okay. No, believe it or not, we actually went over this before we got here. So, <laughs> so uh, the reality is, is the last fight that Joe and I had, it, it was my fault. Yeah, it, it was totally. So it was, she was talking about, I don't even remember what it was, she was talking about something, and I said, uh, you know, it, Sounding a little bit like your mom. Note to you, don't, don't start bringing up how much Sarah sounds like her mother. No disrespect at all. Just don't. So this agape love, it's not the kind of love that we talk about when we talk about loving sandwiches. It's not the kind of love that we talk about when we talk about loving the, uh, the newest Ariana Grande album that just came out. It is a much, much different kind of love. It's one that we truly don't deserve. And it's important to keep that in mind. This agape love, we don't deserve it. The love that you two are going to share between each other, you as individuals, you don't deserve it. But you're going to receive it anyway. And you're going to receive it not because of the acts that you guys carried out, but you're going to receive it because of the character of the person that's giving that love. That is what is necessary for a marriage to thrive. So it's this, uh, this unconditional love that makes such a huge difference. It's the unconditional love that's going to get you through the, uh, the trials. There's going to be trials. You're going to disappoint each other. You're going to fail each other. Adam... <laughs> Probably not this winter because you guys are newlyweds, but by next winter, Sarah's going to stop shaving her legs. <laughs> We're imperfect people. Sarah, there's going to come a time, maybe not this weekend, but probably by the new year, where Adam's going to leave the seat up in the middle of the night and you're going to sit down and it's not going to be there. And we give him credit where credit's due. He doesn't. Okay. Well, then that just means next time he's going to not put the seat up at all, and then you're going to sit and it's just going to be wet. It's trust, though. Trust wall. Those are the least of the problems that you guys are going to encounter. I promise you. But as long as you guys maintain the sight, maintain the viewpoints, and look at this relationship, this marriage, through the lens of the agape love, the love that's based on the character of the giver, not the performance of the receiver, you'll be okay. I also encourage you to, to stay focused on that type of love, because not only is it a matter of the legacy that we leave behind for everybody, but specifically the legacy for your daughter. It's not about you two. It's about having the foundation of that agape love, that unconditional, that amazing, that undying love that's not based on performance, that's not based on the individual receiving it. That's the kind of foundation that you guys want to set for your daughter and the rest of your family, whatever that might be down the road. What an incredible gift that type of love will be for her as she uses that as the litmus to decide the love that she's receiving from somebody else when she gets older. I know, it's not going to happen until she's 35, right. but still, someday. And what better foundation is that agape love for your grandchildren when that time kindly, finally comes when she's 55? Yeah. <laughs> and so, I really, really am and truly honored, and I pray that your marriage is, is centered on the agape love, the unconditional love based on the character of the giver and not the performance of the, of the receiver. So uh, now we get to that magical time where you guys are going to actually commit. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I'm going to invite Sarah first to share your vows with Adam. <laughs> Speaking 
Those it, horrible boys. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> that today that I finally get to call you my husband. <coughs> You're my best friend and the love of my life. I hope I can get through it. You will. I'm honored to be able to promise myself to you today. And I promise you'll always be more important to me than my coffee, than my cell phone, and all of the episodes of Grey's Anatomy put together. <laughs> Right. Right. Um, yeah. I'm proud to call myself your wife. I look forward to all that is to come in our adventure in life. And thank you for making me a mommy and for loving me the way that you do. And I promise to love you more every day than the day before. Even on those days when we're driving each other crazy. <laughs> You're my forever and my dream come true. I love you, baby. Nope. No. <laughs> You're not married yet. That's against the rules. Oh, yeah, really. You didn't give me yours, so I hope you have them in your pocket. I can't memorize them right now. I'm so stressed out. Thank you. Sir, it took me a while to think of what to say to you. I wanted to think of something to make you smile and laugh. Something to make you still with me. But I have the rest of my life to make you laugh. I know it's not been long since we first met, but it seems like years. Like we grew up as best friends. <laughs> Knowing each other's quirks, finishing each other's sentences, and reading each other's minds like we're reading each other's minds. That's what makes our love so special. We aren't just lovers and partners. Friends are support for each other. We are also best friends. We laugh together. We cry together. We cherish our daughter together even though she's being annoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I couldn't imagine holding anyone else's hands through her life like I want to with you and with Because you're not just holding my hand, you're holding my heart. So I promise to you that I'll always make our family priority. I just want to look away. <laughs> so I promise to look away. I promise. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I promise to love you until my last breath. I promise to rub your back and your feet when you're empty. <laughs> like I don't already. <laughs> so don't go overboard now. <laughs> so I'll lose my mind when you can't decide what you want for dinner. <laughs> I promise to be your rock to lean on, your warmth when you're cold, your jerker when you need to laugh after a long day of work. I love you, babe. Today, tomorrow, next year, for years to come. Like someone once great is saying, where you are, that's where I want to be. And through your eyes are all the things I want to see. In the night, you are my dreams. You are my everything. You're the love of my life. I love you, baby. I know, right? Thank God I don't have makeup, Chrissy. Thank God I don't have makeup. <laughs> All right, and so at this point, I invite you two to take both hands, look each other in the eye, and I ask you this, Sarah, do you take Adam to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, for sicker and for health? To wash his car every Sunday. <laughs> till death do you part. Except for the 
Except for the wash in the car, I do. <laughs> Add a girl. I'll do the outside and do the outside. <laughs> and Adam, I ask you this. Do you take Sarah to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, and now and forevermore? For better, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, and make her breakfast Saturday mornings. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> until death. No until death do you part. Adam and Sarah have uh, uh, were intrigued by the idea of, of having a candle lighting ceremony. The basis behind a candle lighting ceremony is to take the two individual flames and to have those flames come together and be one. As the flames come together, for you two, I draw your attention specifically to what happens to that flame as they come together, because the size of the flame between the two candles doesn't just double. The size of the flame when the two candles come together actually triples. And that's a testament to the power, the commitment, and to the amazing things that take place in a marriage. And so I invite you to grab your respective candles, <laughs> and join your flames. circular in shape, not just because that's what fits on our hands better, but because it, it resembles the circular nature of the love that we have. It can never be broken. It never ends. And so it is my solemn uh, hope that as you guys go forward and, and you see your rings and you play with them, that you'll be reminded of that unending nature of, of your love. And so, uh, Adam, I give you this. You can uh, place that on her finger. And as you do, repeat after me. Turn around. <clears throat> Sorry, man. My bad. <clears throat> and so repeat after me. I, Adam, take you, Sarah, to be my wife. Now and forevermore. And I love you with all my heart. So, you can place the ring on uh, Adam's finger, and as you do, repeat after me. I, Sarah, take you, Adam. I, Sarah, take you, Adam. As my husband. As my husband. To have and to hold forever. To have and to hold forever. And I love you dearly. And I love you dearly. <laughs> <laughs> Not coming on. I have <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolutely and distinctly humble honor to stand here and pronounce you, Sarah, and Adam, husband and wife.